Welcome, lovely viewers, to another exciting video. Thank you for choosing our video on Dartmouth Dam. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Dartmouth Dam is a large rock fill embankment dam with an uncontrolled chute spillway across the Mitamita, Gibbo, and Dart rivers, the Morass Creek, and a number of small tributaries. The dam is located near Mount Bogong in the northeast of the Australian state of Victoria. The dam's purpose includes irrigation, the generation of hydroelectric power, water supply and conservation. The impounded reservoir is called Dartmouth Reservoir, sometimes called Lake Dartmouth. The Dartmouth Power Station, a hydroelectric power station that generates power to the national grid, is located near the dam wall. A smaller pond, called the Dartmouth Dam Regulating Pond or Banambua Pondage, approximately 9 kilometers downstream of the main dam, also across the Mitamita River, is located adjacent to the Banambua Hydroelectric Power Station and forms part of the Dartmouth Dam complex of facilities. As we venture forward, let's take a closer look at location and features and its impact on our understanding. Designed by the State Rivers and Water Supply Commission of Victoria, construction commenced in 1973 and was completed in 1979 by Thies Brothers, at a cost of $179 million. The embankment dam wall is constructed with an earth core and rock fill, rising to a height of 180 meters from the lowest part of the foundation to the roadway across the top of the dam, making the dam wall the highest in Australia. The core component materials of the wall include 10.5 im of rock, 0.8 im of filter material made from crushed quarried rock, and 2.8 im of earth for the core. The reservoir has a capacity of 3,856 gl, or approximately 6.7 times the capacity of Sydney Harbour, and can release a maximum outflow of approximately 12 gl per day in normal operation. The crest of the uncontrolled spillway is 486 metres and is approximately 92 metres longitude when full. Flood flows spill over the crest and down an 80 metres concrete chute. The water then returns to the river via an open rock cascade which gradually widens to 300 metres at river level. Once Dartmouth Reservoir reaches 99% capacity, it is considered to be operationally full. Releases are then set to pass inflows downstream to prevent the level rising further. Releases are passed through the outlet works and pass station whenever possible. Water will only flow over the spillway if significant flood inflows enter from upstream when the storage is close to full. This approach reduces the chance of downstream flooding, maximizes operating flexibility for hydropower generation, and protects the spillway. The Dartmouth Dam stores water from the Victorian High Country's snow fields for summer release into the Mitamita and the downstream Lake Hume, and into the Greater Murray River for irrigation. The reservoir's inflow and outflow capacity is quite small considering its size, meaning that its levels very little compared with some other dams on the Murray and their tributaries. The reservoir is a popular recreational trout fishery being regularly restocked by the Victorian Department of Primary Industries. Get ready to immerse yourself in the world of hydroelectric power generation as we examine its impact and relevance. Designed by the State Electricity Commission of Victoria and constructed by Lewis Constructions and commissioned in January 1981, Dartmouth Power Station has one Francis turbine generator with a generating capacity of 180 mu, the largest single installed hydroelectric turbine in Australia. It is owned and operated by a GL Energy. Let's now zoom in on power station damage and uncover the hidden gems that lie within. On 2 May 1990, the 180 MW Francis turbine generator running at full speed was instantaneously stopped by a foreign body left in the Pensock following maintenance. The installation shifted about 2 meters within the base of the earth and rock filled gravity dam wall of the 3906 GL reservoir. After initial consternation regarding the integrity of the wall, declared safe after lengthy assessment, the hydro insulation was repaid replaced but was offline for several years. 
a breach of the wall would have obliterated a couple of small towns and a sparsely settled agricultural area in the relatively narrow 120 meter meter valley below the dam. More significantly, it would have resulted in the overtopping and probable failure of the earthen walls of the 3038GL Lake Hume, 200 km downstream on the Murray River. This is immediately upstream of the regional cities of Albury and Wodonga, and a much more intensively settled irrigation area, and consequences would have been disastrous. In May 1990, the turbine casing and concrete machine blocks surrounding the power station were destroyed when two steel beams entered the turbine. The resulting force ruined the power station and the dam's control systems, making it impossible to gradually release water from the near-capacity dam by conventional means. An improvised system, placing large pipes over the spillway to siphon water over it, was soon installed. The inflow from an unusually wet spring meant that the dam would have overflowed anyway, leading to a spectacular cascade over the huge rock steps formed when the rock used for the dam was quarried from the valley walls. The station was rebuilt and recommissioned in 1993. In the next segment, we'll be exploring pondage expansion and its implications for our subject matter. In 2003, the capacity of the regulating pondage was increased to further optimize the power station's generation flexibility. The station is connected to the electricity grid via 220 km transmission line to Mount Beauty, 40 km away. Now, let's dig deeper into ecological impact on the Murray Darling Basin and unveil the hidden treasures it holds within. The construction and operation of Dartmouth Dam has caused significant changes to the flow patterns and ecology of the Mitter Mitter and Murray Rivers. In particular, the unnaturally cold water released from the dam, up to colder than it naturally should be, contributed directly to the disappearance of the Murray Cod, Trout Cod and the Squarry Perch from the Mitter Mitter River within the first few years of the start of the dam's existence. Cold water pollution caused by Dartmouth Dam is also considered to have contributed to the disappearance of the freshwater catfish from the upper reaches of the Murray River. As we venture forward, let's take a closer look at climate and its impact on our understanding. Climate data for the region are sourced at the bottom of the dam wall, in a relatively sheltered spot at 365 m above sea level. Rainfall records began in 1918. Temperature records began in 1975. Winter is twice as wet as summer, and occasionally it may snow. Weather box as we enter this new phase, let's navigate the complexities of gallery and discover its practical applications. Dartmouth Dam 8,032,007 single lock upper intake tower exposed Dartmouth Dam 8,032,007 panorama power station wall and spillway Dartmouth Dam 8,032,007 panorama first site of the reservoir Dartmouth Dam 8 million. 32,007 Panorama Opt Shore Opposite Entrance Point. If you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to drop them in the comment section.